So the right joystick is always rotation. The left joystick, when you're holding R1, lets you pan. And when you pan, you're changing the axis with which you're rotating around, and that lets you really fine tune your camera angles. And that's basically just going to ensure that the, the decal behaves exactly how you would expect it to be. What's going on y'all? GT Jesse back with another Gran Turismo 7 livery editor video. And in today's video, I'm gonna go over some tips and tricks that are going to help you create award-winning liveries in the Gran Turismo 7 livery editor. What I realized after uploading my previous livery editor video was a lot of y'all were asking the same same question kind of different ways and so I just wanted to create a video here that addresses the bulk of those questions and so again this video it's more focused on the advanced features within the livery editor maybe features that you'll find kind of in hidden menus and things that a lot of people aren't really aware of right so if you're creating a livery and you can't get the decals to do what you want them to do and you know it's coming out funky and wonky and um, it's just not behaving the way that you would expect it to behave this video is going to address that and why that's happening and how you can fix it and it's really really not that complicated or that difficult but it's really just the livery editor menus are kind of hidden um, and the functionality and features are kind of hidden so we're going to address that in this video okay so first tip that i have for you today is regarding custom decals and it's really just to go in to showcase and save the custom decals that you're going to use repetitively before you actually go in and create your livery and that seems like an obvious tip and it might be for some people, but for other people it might not. And the reason why it might not is because if you go into the livery editor, you can actually, in Gran Turismo 7, you have the ability to search for and use custom decals directly from the livery editor. And so this is really convenient because in Gran Turismo Sport, in order to use custom decals, you had to get them from Discover and you had to save them before starting your livery. So if you're in the middle of a design and you're like, oh shoot, I need the Gulf Oil decal, you had to close out, you had to save, close out, back out, go through all the menus, get the decal, and then go all the way back in and pick up where you left off. Now, directly from the livery editor, you have this content search feature and you can search for decals right from here. And you know, that's really convenient for kind of ad hoc decals that you don't plan on using over and over again, but there's no way to save these decals. And so let's say I wanted to use this shell decal over and over and over again. Okay, I've got it, it's here, it's on my car. So let's go on ahead and click finish. And then we're just gonna pretend it's not there. Um, so we'll just go and we'll add a new layer to the back of the car here and we'll search and we have to search again. So that decal, it's not in my collection here. So I've searched for it, I've used it on this car, but now I have to search for it again. So just by going into the showcase and searching for and saving your custom decals before you actually enter the livery editor, you're gonna basically just build up a personal database or a personal library of decals that you can access from the livery editor in the future without having to go in and search for it over and over and over again. So not a big deal, but uh, you know, it'll definitely save you some time in the future and make life just a little bit easier, especially as the uh, decal database becomes more robust and more people contribute to it. It's already blown up quite a bit since the game launched and it's only going to get more robust. And so your decals that you use, they're gonna get buried in the menus and it's gonna be harder and harder to find them. So you wanna go in there and start building your personal library now and just start going in and just favoriting these. You just add it to your collection and boom, that decal is in your collection now and you can use it anytime in the future um, without any issues and without having to research for it. Okay, so tip number two is how to check the editing area on your car. And this is helpful because it'll just give you an idea of where on the car you're able to place a decal. And to do that, you just click on the R3 joystick. So if you click on the right joystick, that's R3, and it'll basically highlight blue anywhere where you're able to place a decal, depending on what editing area you have selected on the left menu here. So this is helpful because like if you look at windows here, I have that selected. You might think I could put a decal on any one of these windows but you can't it's actually just the rear window so helpful to check that so you have an idea of what you're going to do with that when you're creating your livery and then same with the other section this one's also not quite as straightforward but you can see there's a lot of accent pieces on this McLaren 650 so you've got a lot of flexibility with what you can do with accent decals but you might not necessarily know that going into creating your livery if you didn't first check the editing areas. So always a good rule of thumb, good practice, just to run through the different menu options, check the editing areas, just to get an idea of what you're able to place decals on, 
before you actually get started with creating your decal or your liver. Okay, so this next tip is basically the most important tip that I'm going to share with you in this video. And it's basically how to apply a decal to the car and get that decal to behave how you would expect it to behave when you add it to a body panel. And so if you've ever added a decal to a car and you stretch that decal out and for some reason after you stretch it out it starts like cutting in and out or it doesn't look right or maybe it's skewed the wrong, you know, it's, it's just not behaving how you would expect it to behave. Um, this tip is for you and it's going to explain why. And I'll tell you why, that it basically has to do with camera angles. So first, let's say we go into add layer here and we wanted to add a decal to the side of the car. I'm gonna just give you an example of why the camera angle is really important. So right now, I'm kind of pointing at the side of this car, right? If I go in, go into my collection, I'm just gonna select a general side body panel swooping decal that I would normally put on the side of a car and I stretch it out. And then, you know, it's kind of like doing this thing where it's not behaving how it expected to behave. Why is that? Well, if you haven't figured it out already, I will tell you again, it's because of the camera angle. And so it's really important that the camera is completely plumb, just completely perpendicular to whatever surface you're adding the decal to. And so how you manipulate those camera angles is what's important. So first, broad strokes. You can use this menu on the left here to get, again, broad strokes camera angles that are going to cover probably 90% of the car, but it's that other 10% of the car that people have a hard time with and that you know a lot of people struggle with to get decals on and to get them to go on the way that you would expect them to and behave the way that you want them to behave. And so that's what I'm going to show you. It's basically how to fine tune those camera angles and it's really straightforward. So right now, um, I've selected the rear of the car using the camera, uh, select camera tool. And now if you see, I'm rotating around and actually, you know what, let's select the side of the car just for better, um, so it's not as zoomed in. But when I rotate around the car, you'll see where that crosshair is pointed. It's right in the middle of the car. So wherever that crosshair is pointed, you basically want to think about it like there's a pole intersecting the car right there. And we're spinning the car around that pole. And so that's going to prevent you basically from getting the camera completely plumb on these various surfaces, completely perpendicular or dead on these, these surfaces, because you're rotating around this axis that's directly center in the car. So you basically need to change that rotational axis and it's really simple to do. So first I'm rotating around using the right joystick. Everybody knows how to do that. That's how you navigate around the livery editor for the most part, it's the right joystick. But if you want to basically fine tune that. If you look down here, see how it says R plus L, R1 plus L camera position. Um, if you hold down R1 and then use the left joystick, it allows you to pan the camera. So instead of rotating, we're panning. So we do that and now you can see where that crosshair is pointed now. It's like there's a new pole and we're rotating around that now. So let's say I wanted to add a decal right there to that bumper, I would use that panning tool to do that. And then R1, or I'm sorry, R2 and L2 to zoom in and out. And once I am basically completely perpendicular to that surface, as the best as my, as it's my ability, I've got it completely plumb up against the car. At that point, I would go in and I would select my decal and we'll just see how that looks on the car when we add it. Boom, there we go, looks pretty good. So that's it uh, for that tip. It's really just manipulating the camera angles. Um, that's the most important thing when it comes to adding decals to the car and getting them to behave how you would want them to behave. You just have to manipulate the camera angle the right way. And the best way to do that is to um, incorporate the panning feature um, into, you know, when you're just navigating around with the camera. So that's, again, that's just R1 and the left joystick and that allows you to pan around to get more fine-tuned camera angles. All right, so for this next tip, I'm basically going to show you how for any given car, you only have to create your livery for half of the car. And so to do that, you're basically just going to use the duplicate functionality. And that's also pretty straightforward to use and play around with and get familiar with, but a lot of people don't know about it. And so they end up basically creating the livery for 
the left half of the car and then they go over and they end up, you know, trying to recreate the exact same thing on the right half of the car and it becomes really difficult to do, um, especially when you get into more intricate liveries. And so this is pretty straightforward, but let's go on ahead and just select this McLaren logo again. Um, we've got that logo selected and if we want to get that logo on the other side of the car in the exact same position, we basically, from this menu option, you've got all of these other, you know, kind of like sub menus. And so you want to go into layer controls and from layer controls, you've got duplicate, which is going to create just another layer right on this side. Um, or you also have duplicate on opposite side and duplicate symmetrically. So these are the two that you would be playing around with. And so if you select duplicate on opposite side, it's basically just going to, you know, kind of like mirror that decal exactly on the other side. And so this one's really important for uh, decals where something is spelled out like McLaren, um, where there are words. You always want to duplicate on opposite side. Um, because if you duplicate symmetrically, so this is what you would want to use for patterns. So if you have like a swooping uh, whatever pattern or a pinstripe or whatever it may be, you would use duplicate symmetrically for that, but not for words because duplicate symmetrically basically um, it's like it's kind of like pushing the decal like directly through the car, like if you were walking through a mirror. Um, I don't know, it's the best way I can describe that. Um, so you use duplicate symmetrically, really only when you're working with patterns, um, and you, you use duplicate on other side when you're working with words. And so if we go in here and we select a pattern, there we go, boom, we're gonna use that. Um, and we're going to go here and we're going to do duplicate symmetrically and now you can see it's basically mirrored on the other side of the car. Okay now this next tip is basically going to be how to get a decal to basically stretch all the way across the car the way that you want it to. And so if we look at this side swoosh here, um, this swoosh is, it's actually going to look really good on this car and I'm really excited for it, but right now it's kind of janky, right? Like it's not filling in all of these cracks. So I'm going to go over here and maybe uh, what I'll do, I'm going to move over here so I can watch it as I expand it. But um, you've got the uh, various control tools and so first you can just stretch it and shrink it using the right joystick doesn't seem to be getting me anywhere. Um, or you can try to basically um, scale it. And so if I hold L1, if you look on the bottom of the screen, you see where it says L1 is modify, hold L1, that allows me to stretch and skew. So actually, you know what, let's, uh, let's do this. Let's, let's do this, let's make it really small. And then I'm gonna hold L1 and I'm just gonna basically show you what that does. So you see how L1, it's basically modifying the dimensions of it. Like it's, it's really changing the integrity of the decal. So that's how you kind of like stretch and skew decals. Um, that's wasn't the tip that I was planning on showing you here, but it's an important tip to know. So L1 and then the left joystick, it allows you to stretch and skew. But what I wanted to show you was how I can get this decal to basically stretch across to the other side of the car. Um, so that it looks really good flowing all the way across the back of this McLaren. And so to do that, I'm going to go in here, I'm just going to grab a fresh, fresh version of that decal because the other one, um, I messed, it, messed up all the dimensions and I'll put it on the side of the car here and we'll basically get it covering most of this car um, how we want it to. And I want it to, I want the front of it to, do we want it to go all the way to the front? Yeah, let's do that. And then we'll skew it, stretch it, skew it. There we go. We'll just stretch it to the back like that. And it's gonna look pretty good. Actually, it's gonna look really good. Um, so that looks really nice like that on the side of the car. But again, when we get to the back of the car, it looks kind of messed up. And so from here, what you wanna do is come into your layer controls. I'm sorry, not your layer controls, your projection range. And from here, First you wanna, you wanna go into the limit angle option. And limit angle, basically, if we go really far down, you'll see what it does. It basically makes it so it, it doesn't hug the car as closely. But if we go really far up, you'll see that it basically is going to hug into all of the cracks and crevices on this car. And honestly, from my experience, it's pretty uncommon 
that you don't want to just max this out. Because even if you, you know, look at like 9 and 10 here, it's still getting in there in all of the deep cracks and just um, really wrapping this McLaren nicely. So we'll max that out and that'll just ensure it's a really tight fit on the car. And then we'll come in here and we'll go to the depth and this is going to allow us to wrap it around the back of the car. So we'll go plus one and you wanna go slow with this, especially if you're working with a bigger decal, otherwise it can get kind of wonky quick. We'll go plus two. We're still not past the halfway mark and we have to get past the halfway mark if we want to duplicate it on the other side um, and plus three and that gets us past the halfway mark. Let's go around to the front of the car. Yeah, so you can see it's, it's wrapping all the way around the front you can see it flickering here, but um, that bottom lip on the front bumper, it's part of the other um, editing category or, or section and so uh, we're good we're good so that looks good and now what I'm going to do back into my layer controls and we're going to duplicate symmetrically and just like that that pattern is now stretching all the way across the back of that car and that looks really good I really like how that looks okay so this next tip is basically just going to be focused on the rear wing and uh, very similar to what we were talking about before with the uh, depth uh, functionality and more or less just another exercise in that. But um, I like to put decals right on the side of the wing here. And so if we go on ahead and just select the camera angle and do rear wing left and we come in here and we're just going to go on ahead and just select one of uh, my logos here. Let's do the GT Jesse one. Um, if we select that and we put it on the side of the wing, you're going to see that by default, and this is going to happen on like 90% of cars. So it gets, you know, just kind of filled in and um, stretched into the actual body of the wing instead of just being on the side. And I personally, obviously, like you can paint over that or whatever, but um, you want to clean that up. And to clean that up, you're just going to go in here to your depth and angle options. And if you go in again and just adjust your depth, boom, there you go. It's going to go on ahead and clean that up from the rest of your rear wing. And you've got a nice, clean, crisp logo uh, or decal on the side of your rear wing. So just another example and exercise in using the depth and angle functionality within the livery editor. Now, this last tip is just going to be around license plates. And if we look at the rear of the car, we have to put the rear license plate on in the other section. Um, and on this car, if we go to the front of the car, we have to have the body um, section selected for the editing area. So we're gonna start with the rear and we'll go to other, we'll go to add layer, and we're just gonna select the rear of the car. And um, this is actually really interesting because this is the question uh, that the person asked on my other video, but we're just gonna find a UK plate real quick. And the question is basically, when I go to add a plate to the rear of the car, it kind of just flickers and then disappears and I can't get it to add to the car. And so um, you can actually see that that's exactly what just happened. Like it's there, but it keeps disappearing. And so um, the reason why I actually played around with this for a second because it was happening and I, I was surprised. Um, but if we go into layer controls, yeah, I'm sorry, not layer controls. We go into the projection range and we just increase the depth and we increase the angle. Um, it's just something about how the layer is getting applied to the card, um, but now you can you know, manipulate this and move it around and put it wherever you want on the rear of the car, and it's gonna look good. Um, it's gonna go on ahead and just stick the way that you want it to. And so, um, again, you know, it just uh, goes back to what I was saying before about making sure your camera angle is good and um, you're adjusting the projection range uh, depending on where you're trying to put the decal. So that's for the rear of the car, and I'm gonna go on ahead and put one on the front of the car, uh, but you don't have to watch me do that. Now, next for this car, basically what I would wanna do is um, do something about this side vent here. So right now you can see that decal, basically that decal is applied to the body of the car, but that side vent again is on the other section of the car. And there's a couple different ways you can tackle this. So um, again, if you go into other, you, know, you can go in and you can try and fit that decal so that it looks good here. Um, I, I don't think it's going to. And the reason why is because I have to get it big enough so that it stretches and skews the right way, right? So that we can get these lines to match up. But I do not want it 
to stretch to the rear bumper. Look at the rear bumper right now. I don't want it covering that rear lower spoiler and I don't want it hitting um, these fins or uh, any of the lip or anything on my front bumper. And so it's actually gonna get really hard to get this to uh, look good and the way that I want it um, and also not have it impact the front or rear of the car. And so I played around with this for a while and um, I even went in and you know I got it lined up really good and then I tried decreasing the uh, projection and all of that. Um, but it just didn't look good um, at the end of the day. And so what I'm actually going to do instead is we're gonna go on ahead and back out here and we're gonna go on ahead and just paint this car in TCR yellow. There we go. And actually looks even worse now. Um, but we're just gonna go into other here and we're gonna go on ahead and paint that section of the car. The whole thing's just gonna get painted black. Um, I also wanna actually do the hood black, side mirrors, yeah, black and rear wing, we're gonna do black as well. So now we've got the black, red, and yellow for TCR, and that looks pretty good. Um, and then what we can go on ahead and do is go back into decals and go to other, and we'll see if we can find, um, actually, I think we'll go into preset for this, and we'll just go into patterns. And we can see if we, we won't be able to just find a pattern that we can think this will work. Squeeze right in here, that'll look good. And again, we're not looking for perfection right now, we're just looking for something that's like, meh, good enough, honestly. Good enough from a distance, that's what we're looking for. All right, so after playing around with that side vent, I was able to get that color and kind of the general shape of that accent line to look pretty good and, and match the rest of the decal. Um, I've got the time lapse going here for how I created the rest of this livery. Um, not a lot to be gleaned from this, honestly, just because it's going so fast, but um, it does allow you, I mean, this is completely unedited, so you can just kind of watch my process as I try and put decals on, see where they fit, you know, delete, you know, kind of play around. Um, a lot of this, it's really just trial and error, you know, figuring it out as you go and more or less just kind of enjoying the process and so uh, for me I really do enjoy this process I enjoy making liveries um, I enjoy making these videos too it seems like a lot of people are um, you know getting a lot out of them and making some pretty good liveries as a byproduct of watching these videos and so you know that gives me a lot of enjoyment um, honestly uh, there's some days there's nothing I like more than just kicking back and uh, messing around on here making some liveries sharing them and then you know seeing the feedback from the community after you share a really nice livery so between this video and the video that i made about creating custom decals and the video about uploading custom decals and then the original livery editor video that i created i really hope that um, y'all have for the most part you know all of the the main tools that you need to make liveries and be successful with it in Gran Turismo 7. If you have any other questions, don't ever hesitate, reach out, drop them in the comments below. I'm always happy to uh, converse and, and talk about different techniques and tools and what works best for, for you and uh, you know, just to hear different people's input. So again, thanks again for watching. If you did like the video, please do hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel. But uh, otherwise, we'll go on ahead and just let the uh, rest of this time lapse play out. And um, yeah, have a great day. We'll, we'll catch up next time.